Trekking Together is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Don't you need a $5 foot long? No, it's a 5K foot long. It's what you get when you get 5K subscribers. Ooh, delicious. 5K. 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 Martin, the channel has sure changed a lot in the last few months. Just like your hair. You're telling me. Anyway, here's some scenes of how it's been going for us. Let's go make some money. That truck right there is going to pay for that RV, this car, and this house. Plus a pickup truck that you don't see here because the damn thing broke down. Okay. So we're gonna, if you want to hop in, we can go around, go around to the bay. First breakdown. First breakdown. Yes, mom's driving. Stop. Work. Go back to bed. What are you complaining about? Your children are mortified back there. Especially the older one. If it is, then you're gonna just have to prove yourself like Lisa Kelly. Uh, so yeah, what a what a past couple weeks we've had. It's all right. I didn't like that job anyway. Yeah. I despised that job for years. I did it because I was able to be home with the kids and watch them grow up. But now that you think about it, it wasn't even. It wasn't even that because we never even had quality family time. I mean, it was always job first. It was always 24 seven mental Fs. Maybe you can finish the word. I wake up this, I wake up in the morning without a care in the world now for five years. Every morning I woke up, I, first thing is I'd grab the damn phone and see what did I miss. I don't care anymore. I, I don't. I don't and I should have stopped a long time ago. And one thing I'll tell you guys is you could put all your effort into some guy some guy's company for twenty years and in the end you're all disposable. That's, I'll just let you go. But that for sure the, the corporate world has proven yet again that everybody is in so, fact disposable. It, they There's are. no loyalty. Everybody's disposable. There is no zero loyalty. And I'll tell you one thing. As as big of a pain in the ass as it might be to own your own truck sometimes and do this, you're better off because at least you're working for yourself and nobody can pull the rug out from underneath you. All right, guys, getting our very first trailer with Siva. 
We're hooking up right now. Um, we're here at the Sacramento yard. Um, I love people at SEVA. They're so nice. Um, back when we were at that other company and we were hauling SEVA freight, um, the other company, they were not nice. They were rude. But the SEVA people were always just, they were like the light of our lives. They were really nice people. Um, and today, really nice people. Siva, you got good people working for you in your offices. Um, anyway, we're in Sacramento. Um, going to Denver with this load. Uh, they told us that we are the first team that is on this run for them. It's the very first load they've had out of the Sacramento warehouse going to their new um, Denver warehouse. So that's kind of exciting. We get to be uh, the first team. <laughs> Um, maybe it's because nobody else wants to run to Denver in the winter. I don't know. But um, we're here, we're running it, and uh, it's exciting. There's someone coming off of 30. Why don't you see if they got their radio on? That driver coming off of 30. How was that? You guys dare me to do it? You dare me to go in the port of entry there and tell them I'm hauling ass? I hope you like. Ma'am, pull into bay one for inspection. <laughs> I, I said it, and he's like, I've been waiting all night for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the star of the show. That's so fun. All right, back here again. I, uh, I realized that um, I haven't really eaten anything today. I'm hungry. Let's see if they have something here to eat. I'm also gonna ask a very important question when I get in here. Any guesses what that's gonna be? All right, guys, so I asked the question. I asked, how do you say this town's name? It's Tuella. Tuella, well, uh, Tuella. That makes no sense though, because there's no W in it, Tuella. The lady at the register, um, she said that's Tuella, but nobody says that. Everyone says Tuella. So it's not Tuli or Tuel, it's Tuella. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. So Tuella. Let's see if I can remember that. I bet you five bucks I won't. Be asking it again. How do you say this town's name? Tuella. down next to this dude who's also broke down. He's always broke down. He's always broke down. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're not actually in Tuella. Tuella? Tuella? We're in Lake Point. I just learned that today that we're in Lake Point. All these years I've thought that the Flying J was in Tuella or Tule. It's in Lake Point, Utah people. Lake Point. And we're not really broke down. We're just messing around. Well, we do have that leak on that search tag, but it ain't that bad. <laughs> do, 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 do. Commercial break. Find out how I got taller with this one trick. Gain two feet in length with Xtend Z. Hey, Martin. Give him a call. Martin. Have a beer or something. What? How much money will you make this week? <laughs> this much. <laughs> we'll Number. Stop. Martin, what were the numbers this week? Twenty six. Twenty six dollars. 
53775 $53,775. That's a good damn good week. <laughs> Ponchos suck. <laughs> They're the worst ponchos ever. You look like you're wearing a tarp. And I look like Grimace. <laughs> Ready to go do a ride. Uh, some wind's coming in. It's already already starting. Gonna be windy here uh rest of today and into tomorrow, so we're gonna get a ride in and Hang out in the trailer and edit some videos and avoid the wind. It might be, it might be fun to ride in the wind. Oh dang, that ranger's got tow mirrors. Snap, dodge tow mirrors? I, maybe. <laughs> I don't like people looking at me. Weird. That's one thing I hate about this. Like, you look like a weirdo filming yourself. You don't look like a weirdo when people are watching this stuff. All right, guys. So the coolest thing happened overnight. We hit a thousand subscribers. Yep. So thank you so much. That's so exciting. In about a month of actually being on YouTube, we like <laughs> he had to leave because <laughs> people are looking at us. It's like, come on, subscribe, like, watch our videos, guys. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, yo. Don't get me started on that rapping. You know how I roll. Vanilla ice. Ice ice baby. Alright, well, everyone. Everybody. Thank you so much for watching us. Helping the channel grow. We hit 4K subscribers, so that is super awesome. Couldn't do it without each and every one of you. Martin hates how everybody looks at us when we're vlogging. He's like weirded out by it. I know the lyrics, you do the music. <laughs> All right, stop. Collaborate and listen. Ice is back with a brand new invention. Something grabs a hold of me tightly. Fall like a hawk. Daily and nightly. Will it ever stop? Yo, I don't know. Turn off the lights and I'll glow. To the extreme, I rock a bike like a vandal. Light up the stage, watch it jump like a candle or something. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I don't know if I should be impressed or weirded out by that because that was like on point lyrics. I mean. I think somebody's lost. No, somebody has to pee -pee. <laughs> no, I think you're lost. Like you're in the wrong state, bud. Oh, I am. <laughs> How I am. are you? Hi. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, the truck looks so much bigger than mine. Like I can't see El Hueso behind you guys' truck. I know. I I had to park that way so I would take your spotlight. <laughs> guys, we made it here to Little America. I think we're gonna go ahead and then cut off this video right no. here. What? You forgot about the numbers. The numbers? Mamba number five. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mambo number five. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that as much as we did. Sorry for the noise level and uh, the bad lighting, but we're at Little America stopping to get an ice cream cone, use the facilities, and see my daughter. I'm excited though because um, I passed her twice so far this week and uh, now I get to see her for the first time since she's gotten uh, a job as a trucker. Fun, trucker. <laughs> so this is kind of a big deal guys. Four, six, seven, eight, five, the what? Oh, maybe. 
I'm so excited. I'm telling you, Martin, if I don't have this truck parked by midnight, I turn into a pumpkin. Yeah, right. You're ridiculous. No, I'm not. I'm telling you. just in time. Alice? Where'd you go? Oh, wait. I guess she wasn't kidding. It is a pretty truck. It is a pretty truck. It is a pretty truck. Oh, you're a pretty truck. This here, 2009 W900L. Kenor W900L is a fine specimen of a truck. It gets 09, has 1,022,000 miles on it. Hey, that ain't no cat under the hood. No, nope, but it's recently had one. A little kitty apparently climbed into our, our radiator in the van shroud took him out. Oh, I feel really bad. So yeah, it's, uh, our truck smells like death. And now we're trying to figure out how to, how to get it out. Ugh, so gross. Oh, cats. Yeah, it's a Cummins. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> our truck is doing a photo shoot today with my daughter and her photographer. <laughs> Did we get a good one? Yeah. You want to cool. take a look at it? to ask you what's your scale prediction for today bypass closed with a touch of sunshine we could use a touch of sunshine it's a little bit cloudy today All right, let's go let's go let's go viewer was like do you even back bro and I was like oh no he didn't <laughs> I'm kidding a viewer did ask though if I ever back and um, no cuz I'm always filming and I haven't backed a truck in probably like what five years or more has it been that long Maybe. yeah it's like riding a bicycle though right Maybe. I can't ride a bicycle I've tried I've forgotten how let's see if I can back a truck though right let's see it is the woman backing the woman.
riding a bike. It was not very good. But yeah, I haven't backed in like five years, maybe maybe longer. I'm ready to go trucking. I'm ready to go trucking. Let's go trucking. So what do you think? It's pretty sweet. So when I met Martin, he had this most beautiful black and white Kenworth W900, and it was packing a serious horsepower punch. And Alice had an extended hood 379 Peterbilt. So the Kenworth was a 2003 W900L C15 MBN, which is a more bad news motor. It was the predecessor or the successor to the 6NZ. Um, 18 speed, 355, set of 290 inches, crappy air glide 200 suspension that rode like crap. Um, the uh, truck had a horrible fuel mileage when I first bought it because it was an MBN. That's what they were known for. And I started messing with it. And I caught the horsepower bug. And the truck went through a couple different setups. And it ended up making 981 horsepower to the ground. And that's what it had most of its life. So the truck, I think, went like a million two something miles and it dropped a liner and blew a head gasket. But it was, probably wasn't because of the power. It was because of that's just what cats do when they get up there in mileage. Number five. So we ended up selling it with a well, bad motor. The economy had just taken a hit and rates were in the shirt. The rates were crappy. Uh, well, that's all right. You can say that. No, I can't. The rates were pretty crappy. Fuel mods was really bad. The truck was costing a lot of money to operate and... We just decided to let it go and sell it with the bad motor. We sold it on eBay for a whopping nine thousand three hundred dollars back then, which today that truck probably would have fetched like thirty five grand with the bad motor at least. So anyway, after we let go of the Kenworth, we purchased L Turbo. That was a great truck. It was a ninety five Freightliner FLD flat top, seventy inch, Sirius sixty four seventy D deck three, uh, nine speed against the dash, reverse pattern, and it had three ninety one gears in it. Truck paid itself off every trip. Actually, we ended up buying that truck because at the time, Carb was uh, scrapping all these trucks. And this truck actually lived most of its life pulling a yacht. So it didn't really work that hard. And we ended up paying like $4,900 for the truck, I want to say. It was forty-seven or forty-nine. So every single week we turned the trip, the truck paid for itself. And it got great fuel mileage. Like, it always got at least six and a half to seven. Um, it was pretty reliable. They didn't really have to do anything to it. It was a great truck. So we ran El Turbo for a couple of years, I want to say. Something like that. And um, then we moved on to our next truck, which was a 1988 Peterbilt 362 cab over that we called Gabe. Yes, yeah, so it was a... Uh, we bought that truck after having a couple bad stints where we sold the white FLD. We got into... We wanted a newer truck that was more comfortable with a taller sleeper. So, like, you know, if we all wanted to go somewhere, we could... And it didn't work out, and El Turbo was gone. So we found this truck on uh, Craigslist. Craigslist, and it was in SoCal. It was another great purchase because we paid four grand for it. It had a mechanical caterpillar in it, 3406B, at a 13 speed, and had like 390s are in it or 370s. Um, it was a direct drive, 13 speed, so 65 miles an hour is all it'll do. But the truck actually did didn't do too bad. It got okay fuel mileage for a mechanical motor cab over. Um, it was a small bunk sleeper, so it was like the, the single bunk sleeper. It was obviously a flat top. Um, so it was kind of a, you know, uncomfortable truck to run, but we did what we had to do at the time, and it was a great-looking truck and never let us down. It was kind of cool because it had four bags on the cab, so it actually rode really good for a cab over. I was terrified to drive it. I was actually terrified to even go in and out of it. I'll tell you what, sitting in this truck compared to a cab over, it's like twice the width. The cab over was? Yeah. I know, it you was huge. To, you had to get used to it. Plus the 362s, they're like one of the tallest cab overs next to the Ford, like the L9000. So like when people in the 379 would pass you, you could almost see their floorboards because you sat so high up. Yeah, that, that was a really great truck. It was a sharp looking truck, but it just wasn't right for what we were doing at the time. So we decided to sell that truck. We sold it to a gentleman in Iowa. He flew out here, drove it back to Iowa, and he uh, did a couple things to it. And he's, he's actually running it still. Mm -hmm. It's still running, pulling a grain hopper out there in Iowa. Yeah, we see pictures of it on the internet every once in a while, so that's really cool. Knowing yep. that's still out there and it's working and 
well loved that was a truck we kind of rescued too because it was a it was a kind of a weird deal a gentleman was old money and he ended up getting this truck as a lean and he didn't have a title to it or anything so it could have been scrapped because it was almost impossible to get the title for it but we ended up actually going to the dmv and jumping through hoops and getting a title for it okay. actually she did all that yeah before we sold that truck martin was actually eyeing a pretty red truck that was parked not too far from our home yeah, it's a, I had a thing for FLDs. I still kind of do. I, I like a good FLD. They're great trucks. Um, there was a 2001 Freightliner FLD. It was a sharp truck because it had a little 48 inch flat top on it. Had stacks up front. Um, had a, actually had an N14, which I wasn't too crazy about at first, but then I really warmed up to it when we, when we bought the truck. Now I sold the cab over because it just, it kind of sucked, you know, the doghouse and the room and it was either hot or cold in it. So there was no in between. I mean, it was an older truck. So we kind of wanted something newer. They got better fuel mileage. We can take out further. And this truck had an N14 in it, um, 435 horse. It was a low CPL, so, you know, low horsepower, but it pulled great. It had a 13 speed in it, actually a double overdrive, but at four tens. This truck worked all its life like in the mountains hauling lumber. Uh, it was a flatbed truck. And, uh, it actually got really good fuel mileage if you didn't drive faster than 65 because it was, you know, had such low gears in it. It always got over seven miles per gallon. It was very reliable. It was a really good truck. I really liked that truck. We, we named that truck the Red Dragon. It was very fitting for it. Yes, it was after uh, the old school movie. Yeah. And we we hauled flatbed with it. Um, how long did we have that truck for? About a year? I think we had it for a couple of years. A couple of years? We had it for a couple of years. And originally we knew we were going to be able to own it longer than that because CARB was already starting to phase out these trucks and 2001 was on a chopping block. So we were only going to get a couple of years out of it. So we knew that going in. But um, yeah, we ended up actually selling that truck. It went to Tennessee and I haven't heard anything since. I don't know if they still are running it or not. Yeah, unfortunately. So like Martin mentioned, CARB was uh, kind of breathing down our neck here about our truck and it was... Uh, the rates were still not good, um, so we made the decision to shut down our authority at that time, and we actually took a company driving job, yeah. and we ran team together. We worked for a company called Pegasus Hauling Pharmaceuticals. We had a route that we ran once a week from California up to Oregon. It was a couple trips each week, but that was our route. It was dedicated lane, kind of similar to what we're doing now. It was a Monday through Friday job, a true Monday through Friday trucking yeah. job. So we, we ran that for a few years, and then we uh, took the job managing um, the company, the, the FedEx ground business, and we did that for a while. And while we were doing that, we had always had that urge to get back into trucking and having our own business. So we purchased a couple trucks along the way. Unfortunately, we never got to work them, but we're going to talk about them here. So the first truck that we actually purchased was a shiny red Volvo, of all things. Yeah, it was a... Uh... Nothing against Volvos, just not a Volvo guy, never have been, um, just don't like, I can't get comfortable in them, the way you sit in them and just the way they drive, it's just really awkward to me, but it was a cheap truck and we were, I, I can't speak for Alice, but I was always so damn miserable at that FedEx job and, and doing it and I'm going to get into it because the constant lies and the BS you have to put up with, I really hated it and I just wanted to get away from it, I wanted to get back to trucking and this truck we bought ended up not working out we ended up selling it we actually lost money on it because it was a volvo um we put tires into it and i think we lost like three or four thousand bucks on that truck but that truck never ended up hitting the road yeah so then about a year later if i recall right martin said how about we try buying a truck again and he found another volvo but this one was a little cooler so this one was a 780 it had a 13 speed in it it had a d16 volvo in it which is an old it was an old nine those are a lot better uh the truck we ended up buying it from the volvo from a volvo peterbilt dealer here in sacramento i needed injectors it needed cups and it needed uh the exhaust uh, the jake bake plungers or something like that and we ended up making a deal on a truck and the dealer actually ended up putting the injectors in it we ended up trying some intermodal stuff with it because we wanted to juggle the job still so we ended up actually selling the truck uh, I, I kind of liked that truck. It wasn't a bad truck. It had bags in the front, so it could kind of dump the air, and it looked kind of cool for a Volvo. I'll always remember that truck as the first truck my daughter learned how to drive a truck yeah, in. Yeah, she drove, learned to drive the yeah, stick in tail. it. It was actually a pretty good truck. It had 1.2 million miles on it. It had no blow-by. Um, it was a great running truck. I'll, I'll say that. If I had to buy a Volvo, I'd probably buy another one with those D16s because I really liked it. And then we got another truck 
while we owned this Volvo, I don't even remember how this happened, but we somehow acquired another truck. We went up to Washington State and we brought home yet another FLD. Yeah, this one was like pretty pink. No, it was actually red, but it was faded. It was a port rat. This truck was the definition of a port rat. Like we bought this truck. It was a FLD Freightliner, had a Sirius 60 in it. And this was a, I was say 95, but it was like an early 95. So it was a D-Deck 3, um, it had like a, it was like a 370 horsepower engine or something. Uh, it's 430 with the cruise on, but it had the low compression 15 to 1 pistons in it. Uh, that one had a 10 speed in it, had 390s in it, or maybe 370s, but it was cool because that Canadian spread on the drive. So that was, that was pretty, that was pretty neat. Now the truck was pretty well worn in, like I said, it was beat up. We put a lot of effort into it to make it look better, but it was such a basket case when we bought it. I mean, you can just imagine what FLDs look like running the port. There's more stuff we wanted to do to it, but we ended up actually selling that truck again. Probably made about 600 horsepower and it ran really good bobtail. I wish I had put a load under it. My favorite memory of that truck, even though we never worked it, was when we were bringing it home one time and I was following behind Martin and he came up on the air resource board billboard that used to be in our town yeah. and he smoked it out. The port rat that yeah. never was. Right. so do we have any other trucks after that no no we bought this, this truck yeah so this we... truck this truck this truck right here and i always it was a peterbilt guy i'll tell you what i was always a peterbilt guy and i always i still had a peterbilt but this truck like the w900 i bought i had a the w900 i bought that was an 03 before i met alice i had a couple of peterbilts before that i'm not going to talk about those because i have no pictures of those whatsoever they got lost in a great fight family fight of and a computer got destroyed and that's back before camera phones so i had that old 3 w900 and ever since then i can't shake w900s as far as nice trucks go and this truck by far i'm not even going to exaggerate is like literally the, my favorite truck i've ever had i'm going to say it's probably my favorite too it is this this thing is no joke my favorite truck I just really like this truck. I don't know what it is about it, but it has one point, almost 1 1.1 million miles on it. And I'm not even worried about that. Like, I just have this feeling that this truck knows its destiny and it's not going to give us hardships. I know this truck knows that it has a goal in, in life that needs to accomplish and it's going to do it. It is. guys i hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching thank you for your support thank you for subscribing just this has been a crazy journey and we owe it all to you guys yeah thank you for watching i can't believe how the channel just kind of blew up and i 
you know, thank you guys for watching our crap, I guess. Yeah, couldn't do it without you. Yeah, we'll keep making some crappy videos. Well, no, I'm sorry. Good videos. <laughs> she makes really good videos. All right. Till next time. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I fit it up. Hop in my car.